meet that criteria that you've signed up. The two months left in redemption? Yeah. The one's already fallen off, so um, time's going by. Probably three or four of them are like that. So three or four are in that situation. So the, to, to answer your question, when I looked at 20 properties, I had about five deals come together out of that. But I was actually in the car looking at properties where I knew where my exit was going and major action around it. And that's a high percentage. So I think about one out of 20. So if you're looking at like, that's probably what the national average is on putting deals together. Yeah. So it then becomes a numbers game. Right, so you can easily calculate how many, how many, how much money you're gonna spend on your leads. <coughs> take that five percent, and then you know calculate your. Uh, Absolutely, you could do that. Yeah. Yeah. How many uh, properties? Do you, I know you're doing a lot. Of things, how many properties do you look at a week? Uh, right now, I'm looking at none. Okay. Right. But I have a full-time, a very experienced partner okay. that is looking at probably. It varies 30 to 40. Now, Ron, how many are you looking at? Probably like two or three a day. Okay. Two or three a day. And how many signs do you have out? 300. 300 signs out. So, um, so it, it is all a numbers game. Okay. So I don't know if that. Yeah. You know, you, you do a couple and you think, oh, wow, I've done some work. <laughs> yeah, but you got to get that she's got her sign right. that she's done, She's but she's got it in a great location, okay? Right. So um, what I want to really cover is like when we get into the leads is when you're out looking at them, like what is the real exit on this and is there money to be made here or not money to be made? But like to give you an example, my partner this week, looked at one property that is a brick duplex with the people still living in it, three up, three down, and they want $7,000 for the property. So is there anything to think about on something like that? We're in the wholesale business. Do you think we're going to wholesale that one? I'm not. We're, we'll, we will purchase that and then wholesale it. Okay, we're, or we'll, let's put, let me put it this way. We will lock that one up fast. That's one that's a, a good deal. And that's what you're really looking for. It's a numbers game. Now, a lot of the other stuff that we look at, we end up listing. We end up, and some of that stuff is you think, my goodness, nobody would buy that, but they actually do buy it because it's a neighbor down the street or it's an investor that already owns properties on the street. When the second you try to figure out whether something's a good deal or a bad deal, you'll get clobbered. When you want to figure out if it's a good deal or bad deal is when you're actually buying it, okay? And everything else is still a deal. And the other, I'll give you a criteria when it's not a deal to me. When there's three months or two months left in the redemption period and the things at max value, I really don't have a lot of interest in that. It's like I'm looking at all the areas where I can spend my time. That's not going to be time well spent. And my chances of getting a short sale and everything else become, and some of that's a learning curve. You know, like I guarantee you that Denise can go in and do an advertising agreement pretty quick now, right? <laughs> yes. So, and she has, she knows what it takes to have all of her paperwork put together and do all that ahead of time. That's and it doesn't take, she also knows she can do it over a fax machine, doesn't have to go to the house. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, those are all things that once it's just, you know, you start working with it, you can start to see stuff. So, so once you've got your phone ringing, so like what do you do then, right? That's the, the, the phone's ringing, so let's walk through that scenario. The very first thing you wanna do is get a, a, a you wanna have some type of intake sheet, a lead sheet, a cash call lead sheet. And Karen, there's lead sheets back there that need to get handled out, handed out and I don't know so, but I, this is a very simplistic lead sheet. And what we've got in our system is we actually are computerized, so you can enter all the information on an intake lead sheet. 
and it's it's like the data is saved and then it, you can follow it all the way through on the property. Then you're going to find out certain information like the property address and then you want to just start asking questions. You want to you know find out where the major crossroads are and you want to really get their story, okay? And you don't want to say why are you selling because you're putting them on the defense, right? You want to find out what their reason for selling is. So and then you want to just the number one way to make money in this business is not to talk but to listen. So you just want to be a really good listener with people and find out what is it that's why they want to really sell this property. So that was why I was having trouble with your with your sister's house. Was I I did I was trying to determine you know what I got is is that you really want to get it, but I don't know that she really wants to sell it. Okay. Well, your mother's house, I'm sorry. But I'm just, you know, like it's, so you want to really spend the time to find out a lot, as much information to listen on the phone. So now what, um, so you want to get basic stuff like number of bedrooms, basement, garage, that kind of stuff. The, the square feet, they're not going to know the square feet. People don't know what the square feet are. But when they tell, give you an address in a neighborhood, you've got a pretty good idea what the houses are. Now how we work our leads is I have a partnership. I have um, signs up now. Um, I think I held some of them up. I've got like three or four different partnerships. But one of the partnerships is I have a full-time partner that is raising two children at home. And she's excellent at taking the calls and researching all the information. I have another partner that goes out and drives by the property and shoots a picture. So she finds out all the information, the story, and has this information all filled out from the people, like what their motivation is, what they want for the property, the condition of the property, and all that stuff. And then he rides out and looks. So the second he gets to the property, if it's a brick, four bedroom house, and I don't really care where in the city of Detroit, let's just use that as an example, brick, four bedroom, and they want $20,000 for the house, and he gets there, and from just looking at the street, it looks like there's light repairs, and I know this sounds strange, but you can, if you've done this long enough, you can almost look at a house from the street and know pretty much the condition of the house, and it sounds goofy, but it's, it, it, after you do it long enough, you almost get those kinds of instincts around it. Now, he's going by to just look at it, and then he's going to say, if the neighborhood's good, and she's asking him all the, all the questions too. Describe your neighborhood. Is there board ups? Does your house need repairs? If they say the house needs repairs, she's going to say, what kind of repairs? Well, the roof leaks a little. So when she, well, does it leak? And then. From that, you start to get a flavor of what the condition of the property is and what the deferred maintenance are and stuff like that. But when he looks at the street and it's got a good roof and it looks solid and they want 20000 it's a brick, that's a home run deal for him. That's a great wholesale deal. We're going to grab that and put that deal together very quickly. Because he's probably going to comp on a brick like that. It's going to comp anywhere from 65 up to 100 you know. So. It's just, so it's a numbers game. So you get the information sheet. Now, once he's gone by and looked, and she takes the calls, and like the, the brick duplex, when the guy said he's got a brick duplex they're living in, they said they want $7,000. She, at the second she got that is, you know, Roy, you better get up off your chair and get in the car and drive out there and get this deal tied up. You cannot take property in slow motion. You cannot take property in slow motion. So when you see a good deal, you've got to really react. You need to get it under contract. So the very first thing you're going to do is put a purchase agreement together and get it tied up. I'm going to hand out, well, first I want to just set it up, then I'm going to hand you out a buyer favorable purchase agreement. And in our buyer favorable purchase agreement, when we make an offer on a house, first of all, if I tie a house up with a purchase agreement, I pretty much know in my heart that I'm going to move that property. If I'm concerned about moving it, then I'm going to tell the people I'm not sure. I am going to tell the people that I am not the buyer of the property. I'm going to tell people I got a 
4,000 investors and I work with them and they're going to come in and buy it. And you got to remember you're looking for a motivated seller when you're a professional and you come in and you make your presentation right. There's no issues around that. The biggest enemy in doing this business is yourself. <laughs> I'm serious. It's, it's majorly yourself because you're have an internal conversation going about how you would do business. My conversation is I would never sell a house without a deposit. I would never sell a house for this amount of money. I would never, okay, it's your conversation. It's not the person that's the don't want her. They don't have that conversation. So, so, but the first thing is the lead sheet. And some of the things she's going to ask them, she's going to find out if it's a probated estate. She's going to find out how they got the house, what the story was, so that she knows that if they said that I got this out of a divorce, then what is one of the documents that the people need to bring to you when she sends Roy out to take the divorce decree? If she, and she's going to tell them to bring all their paperwork that when they bought the house, or she's going to have them fax it to her, or she's going to have them mail it to her. She's going to try to set them up. So well, the one key thing when you're going to look at a property is you've got to have like all your tools put together because you only want to. Go, we only want to go to the property one time. So um, okay, so what? with the lead sheet, after you've gone through and gotten their story in that, then Roy's gone by and looked at it, okay, and we know there's a deal, then we're going to lock it up under a purchase agreement. And if we're not sure about that purchase agreement, then it might be an advertising agreement. And maybe the house needs to be listed, then it would be a listing agreement. So we're going to, or maybe the house should be optioned, you know. Uh, Greg was talking about how he would put options on houses. Maybe we've got somebody that it's pre-foreclosure, they're a don't want her, they want to walk away from the house, they're willing to do a deed off on that house. So we would take a, a deed to the property and then he's going to put an ad in the paper and find a tenant that'll lease that house and catch up the payments that they're behind. I mean, there's all kinds of scenarios. That's part of the analyzing thing. That's what the, the preferred investor group's all about. But that's, you, you want to, you, you first you got to take all the information and then send somebody out. And adverti so advertising agreements, okay. they're popping up all over the country. People that create websites and then they have people that they list the properties homes for sale. Multi-list services, the real estate board of realtors are bringing suits against those people. They're called aggregators, okay? And they're losing all the suits. They're the, the people are prevailing. So, but what we did to make sure is we actually are doing them as a real estate company and we're giving the people the choice whether to list the house or not list the house inside our advertising agreement. And we've cleared it through the state that we can pay a fee on that as an advertising agreement and not have a problem, okay? So, but you as an investor, what you might want to be doing, because you don't have that, or if you don't want to use that system, what you might want to do is you might want to put it under contract or option the house. If I don't have an exit for a house, and you gotta remember if it's a don't want her, you can option the house. Use a buyer favorable option agreement to tie the property up for one dollar. And I tell the people what I'm gonna do. Look, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go list the house with a realtor. I'm gonna put a sign in front of it. I'm gonna send it out to 4,000 investors. I'm gonna put it on this website. I can get you, if you like, we'll put your house on radio on Preston Smith's uh, The Minister of Finance show and it'll go out to all those, those viewers. You're telling them what you're doing for yourself, but you're really doing it for them too because you're getting their house sold. So you can option a house. If you don't know, that's how you would handle that. So then once you have an option, you have the right to control it and, and do an advertising agreement, list it, do whatever you want. In our buyer favorable option agreement, we have a clause in there that says, that we're buying this house for a profit and we're going to be relisting it for sale in the multi-list and that. The trick is, is you want to make sure you want to deal with a don't want her because they're ready to, and, you, and I'm not lying to the people. You do not need to bullshit people. And I don't have an answer to the sale. I tell them that. I tell them I don't have the answer, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm willing to take my time and energy and work on your property. I'm willing to put my sign up that says for sale and I buy houses for cash. I'm willing to do that for you, you know, and for me. And they'll, they'll do it. And I don't know the answer to that. I had a house across the street from a church next to the church's parking lot. 
So I just locked it up under an option agreement, put my sign on the front, and then I figured the church can call me if they want to buy that for the, to expand their, their parking lot. So it's a, like it's the lazy man's way to do business. So that's one way to view this business is how can I achieve it the quickest and fastest way. And that's and but what I wanted you to get the, the thing you're looking for is that seven thousand dollar brick duplex. That's the nugget, okay? But you don't want to step over the other income opportunities along the way. So I don't know, did that answer the question? Okay. Okay. So, um, so now we got our form all filled out, and Roy's gone out and looked at the house, and it's time to go out and meet the people, right? So this is another thing about like doing this business, you need to have systems in place. So like we put like a systemized approach to this and how we did this was we put a bunch of engineers in the room and then we took all these marketing people and then they listened to the people that are the salespeople talk and they created a, a cash call system. So we, we, we have created as like first the lead, all the stuff you gather, the information you need to know like if, if they're a divorce decree, all the forms you want to gather ahead of time and then what you want to do is you go to the house. So when you go to the house, typically with Roy's going, he's printed up the purchase agreement ahead of time. We don't know what price we're going to buy it for, but it's all filled out. And we're going to go in with that purchase agreement, and we've got all of our disclosure forms. And when you're a realtor, you have to disclose that you're a realtor. So everything's laid out in chronological order. So we've got the realtor, dis realtor disclosure sheet. But the first thing we do, we get the house, we have an inspection sheet. So now you're gonna walk through that house with the owner, and now you don't know how to rehab the house, right? You, I'm just saying, some of you don't have the foggiest clue. Doesn't matter, you're gonna walk and look at the roof and say it looks like it needs a new roof, and you're starting to write down roof, $6,000 to $20,000. You're looking at all the stuff that needs a new kitchen. So you're writing all these prices down, you're not saying anything, they're with you. Then you're going to sit down at the kitchen table and you're going to say, how much money do you want to sell your house for? Well, they maybe rethought their position. And at that point, you're going to make your offer or they're going to tell you what it is. But anything can, like if somebody doesn't tell me what they want for the house, I'm going to tell them I want to give you $2,500 or a very low number. Now that will get a response and they'll tell you where they really are at. And when I first started doing this business, it was like I was talking to myself, saying I would, if I got this house for 15000 that would be a really good deal, and I know that they wouldn't do that. So I have this internal conversation. You've got to throw that one out the window, and don't, don't try thinking for somebody, and you've got to start at the low number. And then they'll tell you where they're really at. And then a lot of times people are getting what I call an auction close. You're there, and they're going to get your purchase agreement so they can wait for the next guy to show up with an offer. So you're going to tell them, look, I'm working for this investor, my investor, I'm limited on the number of properties I'm going to buy, I've got two in mind, your house meets that criteria, are you prepared to really sign everything today if I make an offer? You know, And you want to make sure, that's another thing on the pre-inspection sheet, you want to find out if they're married. If they're married, they've got to have their wife there. If it's a partnership, all the partners need to be there. You don't want to go meet one person because you want to finalize the stuff right on the spot that's a legal binding deal. So you want to like say, well, I'm limited on my funds. I was going to buy two. This is you. If it's me, I'm saying I'm buying it for an investor. And they're limited on their funds. And the, I under order to get two. And I pretty much, when we're out there, we know whether we got a major home run or not. And that's when we're going to tie it up under a PA. Now, once you get into this business and you establish relationships with people, I can then do what I call a buyer referral agreement. So now I pull up in front of that same house for $7,000 and I have Kathleen under a contract that says she's going to pay me $5,000. In this case, the house I can buy it for seven, so I'm going to call Kathleen up and say, Kathleen, I'm going to sign this PA to you, but you need to go tie it up, but I want $20,000. So I could tell Kathleen I want $20,000, but I've done business with her in the past, so she signs a buyer referral agreement, right? I know that she's using a buyer favorable purchase agreement that allows a claim of interest to be filed against the house because she's, her and I've had a relationship. I know what she knows what she's doing. 
I also know that in my buyer referral agreement it allows me to file a claim of interest against the house, which I'm going to do the second she's tied it up. So now my claim's there for my $20,000. i have removed myself from all that drama. I don't have to go tie the house up. I don't have to do anything as a wholesaler. I just put together a wham, bam, great deal. Do you follow that conversation? Okay, so, um, so when Roy goes by the house and looks at it and listens to the story and everything, then we're deciding what the exit strategy is. Is this a, a house we want to sign a purchase agreement on? Is this a house we want to option? Is this a house we want to do an advertising agreement with? Is this a house we want to list? And yes, you can't list the house unless you're a realtor. But you can marry a realtor or you can whatever, or you can become a realtor. And also maintain if you're going to get in this business, it's to your advantage to become a realtor. If for no other reason than to call up a realtor and say,